Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is the fourth video of a Hai Yang's Practice Proverb series. A series sharing some of my original proverbs aimed at improving the overall understanding of authentic internal style practice. Following the same structure as that of a prior weeks, I will first answer questions about last week's proverb and then move on to the new proverb. So, let's recap last week's proverb first. It was Wei Lui Kong Tui Da Jui Kong Bi, or coxes get involved in the control of the leg movement, and the Da Jui or big vertebrae gets involved in the control of the arm movements. The link to last week's video is in the description. <clears throat> An anonymous member asked me by email, quote, The coccyx and the, the big vertebra are two spots that are very small. Is it necessary to focus on these two areas in practice? End quote. Let me answer this question now. <clears throat> yes, this Two areas are small, so very often practitioners neglect them. Speaking from observation, this very neglect causes a practitioner's skill to plateau. Another key point that I did not mention in last week's video is that the main reason many practitioners neglect these two spots is that these two areas are not flexible, or at least not as flexible as other body areas. When someone has a hard time mobilizing or moving a body part, then naturally that place would get neglected. But now I have explained the importance of these two body parts as they can have an impact on your practice. So, please give it a try and uh, with time, I'm sure you will see your progress. Thank you for the question, Anonymous. I hope my answer clarifies your con confusion. Now, let's move on to today's new proverb. It is a long one. It is 行为载意之气 this proverb has uh, three parts. I'd like to translate them one by one. The first part, 行为载意之气. 行 means form or body movement. 为 means is. 载 means carry, bear or just a carrier. Yi means mind or martial intent. Zhi means off. Qi means device, capacity. Put together, it means martial form and the body movement or xing is the carrier of our mind or yi. The other words, when we practice martial arts movements, the form contains its martial intent or martial application. Furthermore, the body carries the mind. The second part, yi wei kong xing zhi ben. Yi means mind or martial intent. Wei means is. Kong means control or formulate. Xing means body, form or martial movements. Zhi means off. Ben means source, root, origin. Put together, it means the mind is the controller of the form. In other words, martial intent or yi controls the martial movement or the xing. Furthermore, the mind controls the body. From the above sentences, you can see the relationship between mind and the body in general, and also 
the relationship between martial movement and martial intent in the context of martial art practice. Also, this word proverb can be used to explain the relationship between our body and the mind or physical body and the energetic body in the context of energy practice such as Xiu Dao. Dao's practice emphasizes the harmonization of the body and the mind. Now, let's move on to the third part of this proverb. Xing yi he yi nai wei wu gong zhi ben zhi. Xing means form or body movements. Yi means mind or martial intent. He means integrate, unify. Yi means one, whole. Nai means surely is. Wei means as. Wu gong means martial practice. Zhi means of. Ben means origin. Zhi means nature. Put together, it means that the integration of the body and the mind, or the martial movements and the martial intent, is the original nature of a martial art practice. Simply speaking, the integration of Xing and Yi is the nature of a martial art. Now, let me introduce this proverb a bit further. Originally, I created this proverb in order to explain the meaning of a style, Xing Yi. The name of the style which includes both Xing and or body and Yi or mind indicates the relationship between two major aspects of this style's practice. Then I realized that any martial art style, at least the three internal styles of martial art, Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua, can all apply this concept in practice. So, these two words, Xing and Yi, transcend the name of the style and in fact indicate the principle of internal martial art practice. The importance of integration of body and mind, or physical movement and martial intent. Furthermore, in practice, the martial energy would be incorrect without the correct practice of physical movements. Likewise, the martial art form of movement would not be precise without the correct martial intent to guide physical movement. The integration of a martial form or martial movement and the right level of mental focus in the form of a martial application and martial intent is the right path for a practitioner or the nature of martial art practice, which is expressed by the third part of this proverb. Now, let me recap this proverb. Body is the carrier of the mind, and the mind is the controller of the body. Integration of body and the mind is the nature of martial art practice. Again, you can apply this proverb in both martial art practice and energy practice depending on how you explain the words body and mind. This proverb is a great example of the conceptuality of the Chinese language. That brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you will enjoy this new proverb. Please post your questions about this proverb in the comment section. I will answer them for you in the first part of the next week's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.